This is part two for the DSEM demo videos about the M plus input for multi-level models. And we will be focusing here on how to bring in the structural equation modeling component and allow for more uh, interesting models at the between level. So first let's see where we left off in part one. So we were specifying a model for the variables closeness and tension. So close, how close do you feel to your partner right now and how much tension was there in your relationship today. And closeness is regressed on itself yesterday. So that's the autoregressive parameter and also on tension today. So that's the cross regression and tension is regressed on tension yesterday and closeness yesterday. All these uh, regression coefficients are allowed to be person specific or random. So that's indicated with the closed circles to indicate uh, that these are, uh, they take on different values for different individuals. And also the residual variances that we see over here are also made random. So these are also allowed to be random. And we see all this by the vertical bars here that indicate that these are all random effects. So these are not parameters then that are estimated at the within person level, but in fact, they become open circles or latent variables at the between person level. So we have the four slopes. Then we also have the random residual or the logs of the residual variances. And we also have the two uh, means. So these are the person specific means that take on different values for different individuals. And these come from the decomposition into a within per, uh, person component, which we see over here, and a between person component, which we see over here. Now, these eight random effects are allowed to be correlated with each other. And that's indicated here with the with statement. And in the drawing, this is shown by having this um, arrow structure that connects all the um, uh, variables together. So the variable, the, the number of parameters that are being estimated here are 44 in total. All of them uh, are at the between level. So we have eight um, random effects. That means that we are going to have these eight random effects. They each have their mean across individuals. So that's the sometimes referred to as fixed effects, although that terminology can be very confusing across different disciplines. So you can refer to these as the means of the random effects. And then there's a person specific deviation. So you see it's person specific because it has a subscript I and these person specific deviations are allowed to be correlated. And that's what we see over here. These person specific deviations come from a multivariate normal distribution with a mean factor with only zeros because these are residuals. So their means are zero and a eight by eight covariance matrix with uh, 36 unique elements. So eight, variances and a whole bunch of covariances. What we can do at this between level, instead of allowing all these random effects to be correlated with each other, we can actually try to do some structural equ equation modeling at this level. And one thing that we could do, for instance, is specify a common trait or an underlying latent variable that actually um, explains the relationship between all the different random effects. So I do this at the between level with the by statement. So I create a new latent variable that is referred, to, I refer to this as the common trait. So CT, we see it over here. And this is measured by the uh, parts of the decomposition. So the within person means, and then also the random slopes and the random log residual variances, or maybe I should say the log residual variances that are random. Um, when we do this, uh, this is, this is what the, the model would look like. And the number of parameters that we see here would be, uh, we would have, because we have eight, um, uh, random effects, we will have eight intercepts. And if the, if the mean of this factor here or this latent variable is zero, then these intercepts will actually be the same as the means. So the gammas that we saw before also. We will have seven factor loadings because one of them, and that's the, the one for the first indicator, so in this case CL, it will be fixed to one for scaling because every latent variable needs to be scaled. So typically this is done by the first indicator, that's the default 
by fixing the factor loading to one. So that's why we only have seven factor loadings. We'll have one factor variance. It's the variance of this uh, latent variable here. So I could include a two headed arrow to indicate this. And then there's eight residual variances, and that's the residuals are indicated here by those little arrows. So for each indicator, part of it can be predicted by this common trait, and part cannot be predicted, and that's this residual. So there is a residual for each one, and then this residual will have a variance, and that's the parameters that we are estimating. So in total, this model would have 24 parameters. Another thing that we could do is we can bring in a observed variable at the between person level. And in this case, I'm going to include one of the variables that are actually in our data file. It's the variable neuroticism. So neuroticism as a personality trait was measured prior to the um, daily diary study. And so now we have to indicate in the use variables option that we also want to include neuroticism. And then I also have to indicate that this is a between level variable. So it only has a variance across individuals and within a person, it's a constant. So that means it will only appear at the between person level. No within between decomposition is done for this because it only has one value per person. So that's how we get this observed variable, this square at the between person level. And now we can, for instance, regress all of the random effects. So the two means from the decomposition, the four random slopes and the uh, residual, the random residual variances, or their logs actually, um, we can regress them on neuroticism. So that's the on statement here. And that will mean that there's just arrows going from neuroticism to all of these random effects. And of course, again, only part of these random effects can be predicted and then there is a residual part and that's indicated with these little arrows over here. When you specify this model, the default, at least in version 8.8, .8, this might change, you never know, but uh, the default in 8.8 um, in .8 is that the residuals here will be correlated. Um, and that's only for the, the parts that come from the decomposition, not for, all, for any of the other random effects. If you don't want this, you have to actively fix this covariance to zero. And you can do this um, with a with statement. So if we don't do this, we actually get this number of parameters, free parameters. We have no parameters estimated at the within person level. And at the between person level, we get eight intercepts. Um, again, uh, these would be the intercepts of these random effects only when this has a mean of zero will they actually represent the means? I will show this um, in the next couple of slides also, how that can be done. Otherwise, they are intercepts. Um, we have eight regression coefficients, that's these eight one-headed arrows over here. We have eight residual variances, that's these, what these little arrows are about. And these are referring that there are residuals and those residuals have variances. And there is one residual covariance, and that would be this two-headed arrow here between the residuals. So that will bring the total number of uh, free parameters to be estimated in this model to 25. If we want this residual covariance to uh, not be estimated, we have to actively do this by fixing it to zero. So then we have to say CL with TE and then at zero. That is the same as saying this does not exist, so then we don't have to draw it here anymore. And in this case, we will have 24 parameters to be to estimate in, instead of 25. As I said, the, the, um, we include neuroticism now as a predictor of um, the random effects. So we have these intercepts that are freely estimated. We have eight of them, and we have these eight regression coefficients. Now, the, the issue here is that suppose a neuroticism has a mean that is different from zero, any mean different from zero, it makes it somewhat difficult to interpret this intercept. Um, because the intercept represents the value we would expect for the outcome variable if the predictor has a value of zero. Now, 
If we have a scale for neuroticism that runs maybe from 10 to 90 or from 100 to 150 or whatever, but if the mean is not zero or if the mean is not, um, if the, the zero is not even included in the scale, yeah, then having a value that indicates what the outcome variable is expected to be if the, the value here is zero, might not be very meaningful at all. So what is actually more useful to do is um, to say, okay, I want to center this using the ground mean from the sample. And the way to do this is as follows. So we had the between statement here. Uh, so n only appears at the between level. And then what we can say is we can add a define command where we say center the variable n and use ground mean centering. So this will ensure that instead of just using the neuroticism score for each individual as the predictor, it will use the deviation of this person's neuroticism score to the ground mean of neuroticism. And that means that the, the mean of this centered variable that is now used as a predictor, the mean of this will be zero. And that means that this intercept here is now much more meaningful because it represents the value you would expect for a person's mean on closeness if the person has an average score on neuroticism. And we can just say the same thing about the other intercepts. So when you have a between level predictor in your model, I would think that in general, it's a good idea to use this ground mean centering for this. In a next step, we can also consider a outcome variable. So we already were using neuroticism at the between person level, but maybe we have also measured another variable, relationship satisfaction. And this was measured actually after the daily diary study. So we can use this as an outcome of the study we again have to indicate that it's a between level variable. So it only has fluctuations between individuals, but not within an individual, within a person, it's a constant. So by doing this, it will appear here at the between level as an observed variable, this square. And then what we can do, I changed the plot a little bit, but it's still all the random effects are regressed on the roticism. That's what this line is doing. And then what we can add is a second line in which we say we want to regress relationship, relationship satisfaction on all eight random effects and on neuroticism. So on all eight random effects are these arrows that go from the random effects to relationship satisfaction. And then also on neuroticism, that's this arrow. Of course, this implies that relationship satisfaction is a dependent variable. And so there is a unpredictable part and that's what this little arrow is about. If we would write this in terms of equations, we still have the same expression as we had before for the eight random effects. But now we also have RS, so it varies across individuals. So it has a subscript I and it's regressed on uh, neuroticism, ground mean centered neuroticism, and then also on all the eight different random effects. And there is an unpredictable part here that we refer to as URSI. So it varies across individuals. In this model, um, what we would have is um, the, the, the parameters that we estimate, is like there's still no uh, parameters at the within person level, because that part has not changed across any of the models in this video. But at the between person level, we now have nine intercepts. So these eight here, and then another one here for RS. We have 17 regression coefficients. You can count them. There's like eight here, and there's nine in this uh, regression equation here. So that gives us 17 regression coefficients. And there's nine residual variances because we have nine residuals, eight here and one here. There's no uh, covariances between any of those residuals. We don't see any two-headed arrows here between uh, the residuals. So there's only residual variances, no residual covariances. So that brings the total number of free parameters in this model to 35. 
and shows you um, yeah, in that this that the different models in this video show you that you can do factor analysis, you can do regression analysis, and you can also do um, what we could refer to as mediation analysis or path analysis, where we have predictors. Then here the random effects can be thought of as mediators, and there's an outcome variable. Um, so these are just a few options. You can do more, but this is, uh, I think, the, the most important basics at the between level.